Without any efforts to restore or maintain some of these wetlands, you know, we're talking about this area just becoming open water. Home to two million people, Louisiana's coast supplies the nation with a quarter of its seafood and exports more than $120 billion in goods and services to the rest of the United States. But it's disappearing at a rapid pace. Since 1932, the state has lost roughly 2,000 square miles, about a quarter of its coastal land. And the state could lose up to 3,000 square miles more in the next 50 years. The combination of us levying the rivers, kind of keeping it in place, the subsidence that occurs, the sea level rise that occurs, as well as these canals that have been dug for different industries, you know, all are contributing to the land loss that we see in the coast of Louisiana. A set of young entrepreneurs are leading an effort to preserve the unique landscape of coastal Louisiana. Here in Louisiana, we lose a football field's worth of land every 100 minutes due to coastal erosion. And so many of our coastal restoration projects are actually struggling to get sediment. Francisca Troutman was a senior at Tulane University when she and her classmate Max Stites stumbled upon a solution to this problem while pondering a different one altogether. We were enjoying a bottle of wine one night and then just sort of thought about how it would end up in a landfill because there's essentially no glass recycling in the entire state of Louisiana. And we decided to take action that night and do something about that issue. In February 2020, the pair founded Glass Half Full. Glass Half Full recycles glass from around New Orleans. We convert that glass into sand and gravel and then we use it for coastal restoration, disaster relief, construction, and a bunch of other things. Starting this as a young person in college was definitely not the easiest. And so there's just been so many things that we've learned along the way. And I think that's something about Gen Z is that we're sort of able to adapt and Google literally whatever we need to know. Um, you know, we Googled like, glass to sand machine. And like, that's how this all started. So we are looking at our glass processing system. Once the glass is in the mountain, it's loaded into the hopper of our machine here. And then it travels up the conveyor belt where it's crushed by a hammer mill system. And then all of the things that are glass, so the sand and the gravel, will travel up this conveyor belt and go into a shaker vibratory screener and be separated by size. This crushing system creates um, sizes of sand ranging from like very fine sand up to a gravel. And each size of sand or gravel has a different use. So this is the coarse sand that we make. And this is the exact size that we use for coastal restoration. And we use a coarse sand because it's harder to erode and the plants love it. The company has partnered with researchers at Tulane University to make sure their sand is safe and effective for coastal restoration. My name is Sunshine Van Bale, and I'm a co-investigator on the ReCoast project between Tulane and Glass Half Full. ReCoast was one of six teams that received a grant from the National Science Foundation to work on ocean-related challenges. A big part of our goal is to test whether or not the crushed glass is safe for the ecosystem. My part in particular is looking at vegetation for marshes and swamps. The darker sand is dredged material from the Mississippi River. The pale green color is crushed recycled glass. We're about to end this experiment and we've done some measurements already on the growth to be able to see that there's really no difference between the sedges that are growing in crushed recycled glass versus in the dredge from the bottom of the Mississippi River. Other parts of the ecological testing team have found that the crushed recycled glass is safe for animals. It's been used safely with some fish species, with oysters, with barnacles. The recycled glass has also shown promising results outside of the lab. 
we've been partnered with the Pointe Shen tribe for a couple of years now, working really closely with them on how we can use recycled glass sand to improve coastal restoration projects on their land. They're truly at, on the forefront of coastal erosion and climate change. Coastal erosion in the Pointe Shen area has a long history. So what we're looking at is a representation or, or a, a, a rendering of how the Mississippi River formed South Central, Southeast Louisiana coast over the last 10,000 years. Each of these kind of white blobs represents a period of time, roughly 1,500 to 2,000 years, where the Mississippi River was moving down through that area. So the Point of Shen area in here, you know, was, was built over the last several thousand years because the Mississippi River, its distributaries, were delivering water and sediment and nutrients here. But now that the Mississippi River is in this path, it's levied off. These distributaries have been cut off from getting the river water, the sediment, and, and the nutrients that historically came down and maintained these areas. You know, the Point of Shen and surrounding communities are really under a lot of stress. But there are other factors leading to coastal erosion in communities like Point of Shen including canals built by the fossil fuel industry. So really any straight line you see on that map, right, is man-made. They dredged canals for timber or for oil and gas, access to oil and gas pipelines or infrastructure. And those canals, you know, have exacerbated a lot of the land loss that we're seeing because they allow for the Gulf of Mexico water, it's higher salinity, you know, water to get further inland and it shock the system. Glass Half Full's restoration work often directly targets these canals. So in a lot of cases, we're working on stopping, cutting off these canals um, by utilizing biodegradable sandbags made of burlap. And so literally blocking that water and then planting plants behind that wall so that they're protected from that moving water and able to take root and grow um, where otherwise they wouldn't be able to because there's so much water moving through that area. And the team has similar plans for a canal that threatens an important cultural site for the Pointe Shen tribe. We're now planning a much larger project with the Pointe Shen tribe to close in a canal that was cut that is now allowing water to rush through that canal straight into their burial mounds. And so that's a really important location for them to protect. And now it's just being eroded by this running water and so we're working with them on how we can stop that running water and close in that canal so that their barrier mounds are protected. Climate change, primarily caused by burning fossil fuels, is another important factor in Louisiana's coastal land loss. So we do have the Gulf of Mexico rising, but we also have to deal with subsidence, which is the sinking of the land. So we think about you know, the combination of the subsidence and the sea level rise. The problem we're facing going into the future is that we're still gonna have subsidence occurring, but the rate at which the sea level rise, the Gulf of Mexico is gonna go up every year, is going to be increasing with climate change. Turning discarded glass into habitat-friendly sand is one promising approach, but the challenge of slowing or halting Louisiana land loss is vast. Feels just like sand. <laughs> The work that we can do here with Glass Half Full and with testing these materials really puts us in the right direction for knowing if we can use these materials for restoration in the future here and also in other places where sea level rise is becoming a problem. Our work is definitely a response to climate change and a response to inaction on the part of government, honestly, for not taking care of our waste systems and ensuring that they're more circular and more sustainable. We are a direct response to that and we hope that not only are we able to make an impact on climate change, but hopefully inspire others to, to make change. You know, we started this without money, without experience as young people and so showing other people that they can do the same in their community and partner with people who care and actually make meaningful change.